Hey, what's up, mortgage coach community? Today, I am interviewing Connor Cullop. What's up, Connor? How's it going, man? Good to see you. Going, going good, buddy. Well, I, uh, I want to thank you for your help uh, with our um, Instagram page. For those of you who don't know Connor, he's a young, up-and-coming mortgage pro. You've been, he's been at it for, what, a couple years? Yeah, two and a half years or so is what I'm, what I'm coming up on now. I'd have to look and see what my actual start date. Actually, my start date, two weeks before I started, I went down to my first Todd Duncan event, which uh, kind of was a cool start in the business because before I even knew how to spell mortgage is how I say it, I, uh, I went down to a Todd Duncan convention and I learned from the best, right? Um, Got to sit down with, with people like Bill Hart, meet them, know who they are so that my first step in the business was uh, kind of cool and different. Won the social media award um, first year before I was even in mortgage, <laughs> which is kind of cool at the time. Well, wait, 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 uh, wait, time out, wait, time out, because I don't know that I knew that. So the social media award at that year's sales master, you were the, you were the winner of that? Yeah, it was a little, he was so, Todd goes on stage, he brings me up on stage and goes, so how long have you been in the business? I was like, negative two weeks. <laughs> My life isn't even posted yet. So it was kind of, kind of cool. It was a good start. Good. Yeah, well, I, well, I love that. And I, you know, I love that you also started to use a mortgage coach. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're, you're a mortgage coach. You've been in the business going on two and a half years in Alaska, uh, you know, doing what, like around 15 million a year in production second year. Probably. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the, uh, we were aiming for a little bit higher than that. And then, um, as this year progressed, uh, seeing a little bit of compression up in Alaska, especially, of course that puts a little bit of damper on it. So hopefully we're going to finish the year even stronger than we started it. But, uh, yeah, it's been a steady growth, um, from the start. My, my first six months in the business, I did probably like, um, first, first year in the business, I did about 10.8 million. Um, and that first six months I did, probably about 2 million. And that last six months of that, that year was on fire. Um, and then switched to a different company half a year after that. And, um, been kind of learning the ropes there. And now we're, we're going back to that production mode. So it's been kind of cool. Um, found our long-term home, which is awesome. Um, the digital platform for Stearns is, is barn on the best that I've seen. I can do my job from my phone anywhere in the world. So it, it's kind of game changing. Yeah. Well, I know most companies are really investing in that digital mortgage experience. And so, um, you know, it, I think that's becoming a standard, you know, like families yeah. speak digital, you got to have a digital platform for both the family and the loan officer, and you need to give digital advice with mortgage coach. So the reason I wanted to do this interview is I wanted to, you know, I know we can learn from you. And then I also know that you're doing a mastermind, some type of special event at, uh, the mastermind event with Stephen Marshall coming up in a couple of weeks. So I, I do want to make sure you share what you're doing with Steve Sims, another leader in our community, but let's, let's talk about what you're doing with Instagram and Facebook as a, you know, as a mortgage professional, because whether it's a brand new loan officer getting in the business, I know they can learn from you. And I, you know, I don't care if it's someone who's been in the business for 20 years and they're one of the 1% most successful professionals. I know they can learn something from you. So yeah, abs walk us absolutely. I agree. Share, um, share your social media, you know, stack or platform, and then let, I'll just ask some questions around it. So I guess going back to where we started this call, um, being a millennial. So I, I am, I am a millennial, uh, which gives me a certain skill set of growing up in my communication. And I, and I love the correlation between me and Steve Sims for this reason. Because Steve Sims grew up in an era where in order to go hang out with your best friend when you were a kid, you had to go on their go down the street, knock on their parents' door and ask them, hi, ma'am, sir, is it all right if Johnny can come out and play? Like that was, they had to build a relationship um, in, in person, right? By knocking on the door, invading their space to get their kid to come play on the street with them. And um, for me, I had a little bit of that, right? Like I, Instagram and Facebook didn't come out until more than halfway through my life, right? So it's not like I was raised on it, like, like what some of the generation now, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a new form of communication to me. And social media, is, is social media video, all of this is, is new platforms that we're able to use to, to share our message. It's the same message that Steve Sims does when he does a handwritten note. It's just portrayed differently. And I think that that's one of the biggest divides, um, and I'm pretty passionate about it, uh, I want I want to share that with as many people um, in in the older generations. Really, I think of people like you, Bill. You guys have all mastered it. You've you've mastered that being able to, and I think that's what sets you apart is being able to build a relationship through video 
the same you would through handwritten cards and stuff like that. It's not a different, it's not so different. You just have to ha be able to be relational through a video um, and portray like your care and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it actually makes it stronger. Um, but a lot yeah. of people are scared to do it. And then social media Absolutely. is the same thing. Take the video piece, piece out of it. What's the difference between making a post on someone's timeline um, from sending them a handwritten card? I don't think there's much of a difference. Um, I think it does, uh, handwritten cards more personal and that kind of stuff. Um, and they can see my bad handwriting, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I was a mechanic in my past life, so my handwriting is terrible. It looks like a doctor's handwriting. Um, but I think that that relationship is, is still able to be built. And when I first read Steve Sims book, which is why I started following him and tried and building a relationship with him over the last year and a half as, as best I can is um, I was looking at moving up to a new area for my business. So I'm in Anchorage, Alaska, and I wanted to move up to Fairbanks, Alaska. And rather than going up there and spending all this time, money, renting cars, hotels, all that kind of stuff, what I did is I, I got the MLS listing of every realtor that's in the area and I added them on Facebook. And then I started farming them, right? So you go and you take the top 20% of those people. There's not a ton of realtors up there compared to places down in the lower 48. But you take those 20 people and on Facebook, you have the ability to, to follow that person, right? And so that they're going to show up on your timeline first. Anytime they post something, share something, comment on something, they're going to show up there, which means I can interact with them almost immediately. So they post, they make a post about their business, about their friends, about their family, and you comment. Every time that they do this, they comment. And what, so what started to happen was that because the algorithm on Facebook works in my, my benefit, every time that I touch them, it starts working their algorithm to see me more often. So now I became popular wow. on their Facebook page. So now my, 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 my photos and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not sponsoring to them, I'm not blasting to them, I'm not emailing it to them, it's showing up there naturally because we've developed a highway between each other on Facebook. Um, those algorithms will talk, it's a spider web, right? It's a two way street. And, and my stuff started showing up on their, on their timelines and they started commenting. We literally built relationships over Facebook without ever talking on the phone. I never talked to them, never met them in person, nothing. Um, and by the time I, fir my first time going up to Fairbanks came around, I had meetings scheduled the entire time I was there from my Facebook contacts. Um, and it, since then I've gone up there three times, every single time I go up there and come back and come back with a million dollars worth of transactions, almost every single time every time, which is three times <laughs> so far. So um, if that's not proof, and I've started doing this in California as well, I'm coming down to San Diego. Um, my bride to be is uh, not a fan of the cold weather. So we'll be spending our winters down in San Diego. And in that same thing, is, it, it's just a bigger pot, right? It, you, you, you have to be more concentrated on who you're following. But I think that's one of the coolest tips about Facebook and, and the correlation between Steve Sims is that relationships can still be built over social media. It can still be built over um, Facebook videos, text videos. Um, and I think it can be built better than, than what in the back, like my connections and I have people in Florida, um, New York, Colorado, Texas. And it's like, you have this huge web of people that I can reach out to. Realtor calls me yesterday. Hey, do you have a connection down in Minnesota for a real estate agent? Yeah, absolutely. Let me get to my database. Um, of course they're going to get that for realtor refill fee and all that, but, uh, I'll make that connection to my sphere, which is huge. So, so Connor, first of all, when we were prepping, you were telling me you were moving to San Diego. It sounds like you're planning to live both places. You're going to live in the, you know, Alaska winter in San Diego, and then you're going to, in the summers, live in Alaska. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I think we're, I'm going to call it the youngest snowbird ever, is what we call it in Alaska, snowbird. So we're getting out of there during the snow, snow year. But, uh, but yeah, I, wanna get, I love the summers in Alaska. I can't give it up. I was born and raised there. And uh, California, my family's moved down here. A lot of my family's moved down here. So we're going to come down here. The weather's beautiful. Um, I am military as well. So the, the VA market down here is really strong. And that's part of my uh, ambition to move down here as well. Alaska, it's almost all military. Um, and I've based my business around military for that reason, because 70% of my clients are military. And as they're PCSing in and PCSing out, they don't have time to meet. So I, I've had to develop my, my mortgage strategy to be as, as personal over social media as over text. Um, over all my touch points um, as possible because I don't have the opportunity to meet them anyways because they're coming in and they're already in contract. Um, I, I've trained a lot of my realtors on doing site on scene. So they're doing face, FaceTime live, so FaceTime videos with their clients doing the walkthrough that way, putting an offer and contingent on viewing the home um, 15 days into the transaction. 
And so um, having, having that, I don't actually have to have an office that I sit in to meet clients very often because the, the industry has changed. I think uh, the stat, last stat I saw was like 10% of clients or so come into the office now. Um, and a lot of that is obviously influenced by Quicken Loans and all the, the big online, um, I guess, call center shops. I don't, I don't really know how to ex exactly explain them. But, uh, but yeah, I think um, I've had to morph my business into being very similar to that on the military side just because I don't even have the opportunity. They're not in the same state. Love it. Love it. Well, I love, first of all, thank you for your service. Love that you use a mortgage coach to help military families make better decisions. I, I challenge you to enter into our contest for, for May. So when you, when you submit a, a total cost analysis with a video, please make it a military you know, um, family total cost analysis, if you don't mind. I would love to, to see that. And I've been doing more and more interviews uh, with loan officers that special specialize in helping military families. Love that. Uh, yeah, I'll, have hey, to, I'll anytime, that down. I'll, I'll post it in your group here uh, shortly. I'll get it done today. Yeah, appreciate that. And then, and then I love anytime someone's doing lifestyle and you know, you're new to the business, uh, you're, doing, you're, you're obviously living your life by design, you're creating your business around your lifestyle ambition. Um, so I love that. So any other Facebook ideas? And, and I want to make sure we transition to, to Instagram because I've seen more and more, I mean, realtors are killing it on Instagram and I'm seeing more and more loan officers trying to get serious and, and you've built a pretty big following. So I want to make sure we, before we wrap this up, we get some Instagram ideas for the community. So yeah, and that's, that's the other half of my business. Um, mortgage is my primary um, job. And then I have the military, which is my weekend fun job, drill weekend in the guard. And then uh, <laughs> my nighttime job is social media marketing. So social media marketing to me is something that actually my brother got me into a lot bigger than, than I, previously. I just, I wasn't that into social media. Um, knew it was a tool. I use it as a tool, but I, I, I've never clicked and, and, and just shared every life story, everything that's happened. And, and my brother's a, he's a bodybuilder. He's a men's physique competitor. Um, he's prepping for a show here in three weeks. And, and what he did with social media was he started selling his services. And I saw that he started building a following. People were seeing his posts and he was selling memberships for his, for his coaching. And I was like, wow, that's powerful. Um, and, and so we started, we started going down all these growth tactics, all this stuff. And, and here, what is it about three years later after we started our company, I'm at 18,000 um, natural real followers. Um, I get about 3% to 5% interaction rate, which is, um, on the scale of big accounts and, and small accounts, your, your post is only going to three or 5% of your, of your following anyways, unless you start working that algorithm where it says, okay, Dave Savage's post last week is very, very popular. We're going to start showing that to 20, 30, 40% of those, those people. Um, Instagram is not a sales platform yet, in my opinion. So as, as, as a mortgage professional or a real estate professional, um, there, there's, there's, one main thing that I look at is, is can you sell a hundred dollar subscription, right? Multi-level marketing is huge on Instagram right now. So a hundred, hundred dollar a month subscription, you can sell all day long on social media because you show the value. They click the button and say, bye. It's a, it's a quick um, interaction and they don't have to have a lot of trust. Now in the words of Todd Duncan, we're in a high trust selling role. You have to trust me at a very high level to want to do a real estate transaction with me as a mortgage professional. Um, and the, on Facebook, it's, it's had enough time to mature where um, when I message someone on Facebook, they click over to my profile, they see who I am. It's validated in their head. They know this is a real person. And, it, and it's, it's, there's enough trust there with Facebook to, to say that, that I'll do a transaction with you. In fact, 30% of my business comes directly from Facebook. Now I have about, uh, I have 50 Facebook paid groups with about 110,000 followers total in them nationwide. So one, one per state is what we kind of went for um, and in the big hubs. And so those, those groups have grown, but I focus only in Alaska and California. And then I have realtors that run those pages down in the States. But um, so time out before you keep going on that. I do want to tell you I, I interviewed a loan officer, Larry Vtag, who I think he credited, I'm trying to remember the interview about, 80,000 in commissions last year on Facebook. And, you know, he's a local mortgage pro in a suburb outside of Chicago. 
And he just talked about how he's using organic Facebook. <laughs> and I think he got one or two realtor relationships that he credits to Facebook. And then he tracked the leads that he got through Facebook. And it was significant business, guys. So I'm going to put a link down below to that interview with Larry Vitag. Because I think it's kind of cool. I'm talking to you. You're a millennial. You know, you grew up on this stuff and you're really focusing on it. He's not. I don't know his age, but, you know, over 50. And, and he is just using Facebook as, you know, a dad and a local guy. And he's killing it. So check that out below. And keep on going with this Instagram conversation. And yeah, so, so, yeah, Facebook, yeah, building business is huge. It's very, um, it, it's, it's obvious that it works. Instagram, I think, as you were saying, foresighting what's happening, right? If, you, if you're focusing on where the puck's going, you're going to fail. Or sorry, if you focus on where the puck's going, you're going to eventually win, right? You're going to get it right. And, and I think that Instagram is eventually going to be that platform. Um, they, they've slowly been making it into a, um, into a, a, a sales platform. So sponsored ads are huge. In fact, they're incredibly cheap right now. Once you get past that 10,000 um, 10,000 followers um, number, which we've talked about quite a bit in the past. Um, you now have the swipe up features. You can put links in all your stories. It makes it so that you can be a, a sales platform on Instagram. Um, definitely have to have to back out. There's a lot of people that, that look at social media and are like, I'm going to post my life. It's so much fun. I can follow my friends and family. Um, I, I don't really view social media as that. It, it is a tool to my business. Um, and so when I'm posting, I am very... Um, the way that I'm posting, how I'm posting, when I'm posting is very, and, and I have a lot of intent into what I'm doing. And, and I think that's really important for people to kind of zoom out. They've got to zoom out and, and look at what, what they're posting, how they're posting it and how it's affecting. Because if, if you're just posting whatever you want, um, it can go sideways really quickly. But on, on the growth side, there are a lot of growth tactics. Um, one, my company does a automated approach for a lot of our clients. So I coach um, about probably 40 to 60 people nationwide, majority of which are realtors, um, some in Canada, Florida, Texas, um, California, all over the place, right? And um, we, we use our algorithm to do that first initial touch. Um, so it's kind of, uh, we, we want to have a mass influx of people so that they can personally connect with, with more people. Um, so it, basically what, what I was doing before was I'd sit there and I'd go and I'd find hashtag Alaska real estate. And I'd go follow, 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 follow. And I'd follow all those people because if they're posting that, they have to be in the industry of some, some way, some kind, some form. Right. And, 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 and so what we found is that there is an easier way. And so we, we have an algorithm that will go in the background of your account and it'll follow all of those people that do that hashtag. It'll follow, um, it, it, it it'll follow on a geolocation. So I've gone and I, I've gone to go ahead. Cutter, look, well, what I want to do, cause well, those are good ideas. I want to give, you know, and I want to get to the Steve Simpson here, but I also want to just give them a couple nuggets like that they can mm -hmm. just do. Like if, if you are on Instagram, I mean, I'm, you know, a photo nerd. So, I mean, I think I started Instagram like within a couple months of when it was founded. I just love photos and I immediately loved it. If you do not follow the mortgage coach uh, Instagram page, you should It's Instagram. And if you're in the mortgage business, you know, you're invited to follow me personally, D Savage MC, but also, Connor, what is your Instagram for anybody that wants to follow you and just see what you're doing and how you're doing? Um, so I've got two. It's Connor Cullop Stearns, and then there's Connor underscore Cullop. So those are my two accounts, um, and I can so, post them in the comments. Yeah, we'll post them down below. So give us just a couple ideas that they can just implement today. Like, what are some things Huge. that loan officers or realtors should be doing today that are just simple and easy to implement? So I teach classes on this. I teach realtor classes on this in, in a class for, classroom setting. Um, and one of the most powerful takeaways that we've, we've found is that um, as a realtor, you're not selling, you're not posting on Facebook to sell real estate. You're posting on Facebook to sell yourself. Um, you're building that relationship. How often, and I've, I've asked this question to probably, probably 300 people in person. And then that question is pretty simple. How many homes have you sold on Facebook directly? Like you can, you can, you can say that someone commented on that photo and said, Hey, I want to buy this house. Give me a call. I've only ever had one person raise their hand and, and, and about 300 people that, that have been in my classes. And to me, that's pretty powerful odds, right? When, what I, when I click into realtors and mortgage lenders, Facebook and Instagram pages, all you see is posts of properties 
and maybe loan numbers. Um, and although that stuff is very important, you can't get away from the fact that if you don't, if you're trying to sell that property and they can't tell who you are as a person, they're going to go talk to their realtor that they talked to on Zillow yesterday to go see that property. You've already given them the information that they need to make a decision. So you have to sell yourself. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk says it's best um, jab, 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 right hook, right? So your entertainment, entertainment, entertainment sales pitch. You, every post can't be that sales pitch on the, um, on the uh, uh, selling a property because frankly, the, the odds of you selling a property from your post on Facebook is nil to none. It's very, very, very slim chances. So I'd say that's the most powerful when you're posting um, you've got, I think I did the math and you've got like 21 opportunities through a transaction to make a post about that transaction, right? You've got the easy ones, the closing table with the clients, um, with the backdrop at title. Um, you get to tag the title rep, the, the realtor and potentially the clients if they're okay with that. Um, as you're sending out quotes, as you're sending them a 90% letter, as they're pre-approved, um, clear to close, those are all opportunities that you can take advantage of to post on Facebook to say, Hey, I'm doing stuff. My name is Connor Cullop. I'm a mortgage loan officer and I just pre-approved two more people to buy homes. Um, those are all opportunities that you can share on Facebook so that people see that it's unfortunate, but the saying goes, people like popular people when it comes to social media. Um, the more they see you do, the more they see you do, um, the more people that are involved, the more people you tag, the wider you can spread that net, the, the more people are going to engage. People, especially millennials, they see that follow, how many followers you have, how many likes you have, how many comments you have. They see that as you being validated. Once you're validated, they can trust you. Um, and so if you're posting a thousand posts and you get one like per post, I would suggest rolling back and finding out how you can develop content that people are going to engage in. Love, sure. love this, guys. So... I'm going to have Connor and more interviews with the mortgage coach community. So if you have questions on social media, post them down below. Uh, a few more things. The, if you want to, if you want to be strategic with Instagram, recommend that you follow Seth O'Brien. Uh, he is the chief marketing officer for um, American dream TV. He's also a, you know, a mega agent down in San Diego. Uh, he's, I think he's got a reality show that's coming out soon. He's got over 30,000 followers and he's killing it on Instagram. When I, uh, last talked to him, he's killing it with Instagram stories. You know, he's, he's saying like, Hey, I've got this big following. I've got this great engagement. It's a platform, but I'm getting buyers from my stories, you know, like, cause, cause they can just respond to the message. So he's yep. monetizing it big time. Follow him. I also interviewed him. I'm going to put a link down below to that. Killing it on Instagram as a realtor. Um, make sure you're checking it out. Make, if, if it's something you're interested in. Uh, another loan officer in the mortgage coach community, um, Shannon O'Hara, uh, out of Bozeman, Montana. Uh, she's doing really cool stuff in Instagram. Be very strategic. Top producing mortgage professional. Killing it with mortgage coach. I've interviewed her a few times. She was actually one of my guests on Scriptapalooza. And, and I don't know. I mean, I'm learned, I, I've been on Instagram. You know, I'm an OG Instagrammer on a personal <laughs> note. But, but in terms of using it strategically, I'm a very new guy there. You know, I've mainly used it because I like to take pictures and, you know, for friends and family. And the mortgage coach, you know, yeah, that is strategic. It's a project with my daughter, Sydney, uh, where we, she helps me keep that updated. But you know, we're, we're more just, you know, showing mortgage coach in the real world. So I'm, I'm still learning how to be strategic. So guys, if you have questions, post them below. So you and I are both going to be at mastermind in a couple days or a couple weeks. And I know you've got a vision with Steve Sims, who I've also interviewed guys. If you don't know who Steve Sims is, you know, Google him, check him out in mortgage coach, but you know, tell us one, what you're doing and why you're doing it. So that anybody in the community wants to connect, they can connect with you. So I was connected with Steve Sims about, like I said, about a year and a half ago by Bill Hart. Uh, Bill Hart uh, told me as his client saying, you will be at this event or I'll fire you. Essentially, it's kind of what he said. He probably said a little nicer than that. Um, and so I went and bought a ticket to go see Steve Sims, meet him in person. And it was epic. Um, Steve is a great guy. He's very intelligent, um, owns, owns and runs one of the largest concierge, uh, luxury concierge businesses in the world. Um, so building a relationship is literally the name of the game for him. And uh, he wrote a book, Blue Fishing. If you haven't read that, I highly, highly, highly recommend 
but want buying it both audible and paperback audible. He reads it himself. He's a British guy. Um, and you, you can't get the same, um, out of just reading it, right. You, hearing him talk about it is, is, is bar none the best way to, to listen to it. And then having the, having the book so you can highlight all the areas, right. Um, knowing what you're reading. And so Steve, uh, contact with Steve. I know that he's going to be a keynote speaker on the six at mastermind and um, started talking to him and finding out what he's going to be doing every other night. And so he's flying in on the fifth. Um, and I told him, Hey, let's get together. I want to have my team, um, you know, meet and greet with you, have some fun. And um, he said, well, let's make an event out of it. He does speakeasies all around the world. Um, and the speakeasies, he brings on a guest. So we kind of developed an event around this. It's going to be at the seven o'clock social is what it's branded as. Um, really, it's just getting together with Steve and asking him questions before he gets on stage and shares it with everybody else. Um, there's going to be some pretty important questions that he's going to cover, how to get credibility with massive media agencies. I mean, this guy's been covered by Vogue, um, base, uh, what is it, Forbes, every big media outlet that's out there. This guy has an article somewhere about him. Um, he's friends with Elton John. He goes and tours SpaceX. He sent people down to Titanic. The Pope has um, officiated a wedding for him in the Vatican. Like it, the stuff that this guy accomplishes is amazing. And so there's a lot of lessons to be learned from him in the mortgage code, in the mortgage industry, which is why I think he's going to be the mastermind keynote speaker, right? Is because of what he has to share is very important to how this business is going and building relationships. So there's going to be an opportunity. It's going to be two hours of scheduled time for Steve to come by. We're going to have drinks with him and talk about some strategies. This is not a forum where we're, he's on a stage and we're sitting in the crowd. This is going to be socializing. You'll get a free signed book by him. Of course, um, he's going to bring some, some books and share those with the group, which is awesome that he's willing to do that. And then uh, after that, who knows? Um, I kind of, I was looking at the timeline. I was like, okay, two, is two hours enough? Um, I think two hours is enough to learn a lot from Steve. And then after that, we're going to go wherever the night takes us. I didn't want to plan that part. So we'll let that be. Um, he's probably going to stay out with us till about 10 or 11 o'clock. So I'm excited about that. And uh, so if anybody in this community, this, this is the first time we're talking about it. Um, I've only shared it with two people. Um, there's going to be a link. It does cost $250 to come in and hang out with him. Um, he typically, he's got, he's got a speakeasy very similar to this happening in Canada. It's $10,000 a ticket. So consider this a bargain. Um, and, uh, we're going to hang out with the guy, have some fun, learn a lot. And, uh, of course, Dave's going to be there. I think Todd's going to make an appearance. It sounds like, um, trying to get Dan Rawich to come to mastermind so he can show up to this event. Love all those guys. Um, this is not a recruiting event, which is cool. So, um, like he said at the beginning of the call, I'm a 10 to $14 million producer. I'm not trying to recruit you to my team. I'm not even getting any financial benefit out of this. Just want to get together with good people and, and, and learn from Steve in a, in a place where I can learn from him as well. Uh, so, uh, that's the only reason why I'm organizing it. it. So, <laughs> so guys, I'm going to be there. Todd Bookspan is going to be there. Sounds like we might get Dan Rawich there. Steve Sims is there. I'm really going there as a student. Um, I've, I've interviewed Steve a few times, so you can check those out. His book is amazing. I mean, it's a must read for the mortgage coach community. He is a guy that, you know, if, if you want to upgrade how you connect with people, you want to upgrade how you deliver experience, you know, you, you know, a mortgage experience for families, you know, it's, it's just going to school on Steve Sims is, is a must. So it's going to be cool. Hope to see some of you guys there. I also have no financial gain here. Um, I just thought it would be fun. I'm going to go. And I think you capped it at 20 people. So, you know, there's going to be 20 max. people max at the event. So it's going to be a small group. And if you want to come hang out with Steve Sims and a few other folks and some like-minded people that were willing to, you know, invest $250 to, to be there. I will also, you know, I will also down below. Add, check it out. I will also add, we're already halfway there. So, there's only about 10, 12 spots that are left. Um, so if someone wants to grab that spot, they need, they need to do it pretty quickly. Um, like I said, the reason why I'm keeping it at 20 people is because I want it to be one on 20 with Steve. I don't want it to be 40, 50, 60 people in a room um, asking questions. It's not the form that we're going for. I want to be able to be, you know, all everybody in one circle um, cheersing to something, right, to, to, to success in the next year, not 40 people in the crowd. So that's what we're doing. It's going to be very intimate, fun. With, with Mr. Steve, so cool, sounds good. Cool, and you, and you guys are host of the bar, so again, this is not a dinner, you know, make sure you eat at dinner before or after, 
but it will be hosted drinks and it will be hosted time. So dude, this is our, our first interview. Look forward to interview, interviewing you more. If you could share that TCA in the group, I'll put this in the group um, sometime today, no later than tomorrow. And uh, if you're going to uh, mastermind, share a comment down below. Look forward to seeing you. And uh, Connor, look forward to having you back and look forward to uh, learning more about how to use social media in today's marketplace, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Take it easy.